Okay, this is uh, ITS 148, and today is uh, October 10th. And uh, let me uh, share my screen right now. And um, I don't need this here. Okay, so um, so uh, this is La Lima, and we are around here. And uh, how to work with collections. So we're going to learn about collections. Are just uh, they're like arrays. You use them so, sort of the same way, except for um, collections are actually a uh, .NET class, whereas uh, arrays are actually built in a C sharp. <clears throat> but uh, and you you uh, you kind of use them in different ways. So let's. Um, so I was going to start by um, going over finishing the slides for chapter eight, which talks about some of the fancy methods that come with arrays and collections. So we ended around, uh, let's see, we ended around, we did four each loops. Um, we did rectangular arrays, and we, let's see, we did a rectangular arrays, this is about, so yeah, we did way past this, okay, we did, uh, that's right, get length, get the size of them, um, uh, oh, uh, these are uh, jagged arrays, uh, you notice it's, you refer to the elements a little bit differently than um, than rectangular arrays, uh, jagged arrays here. So a jagged array uh, has a bunch of rows, but the rows can be different lengths. So each row can have a different number of columns. So you like when it displays out like this. And uh, so you can get method, get upper bound. Uh, you can do binary search and sort. You do sorting and binary searching. And uh, this is how you copy array. I don't think we went this far. Copying array, an array from one array to another array. Um, oh, first of all, we should understand about referencing arrays. Okay, so if you uh, have an array like this, like this inches one, and then you, uh, you decide to, um, uh, then you you declare another array called inches two like this, but then you set inches two you set this equal to inches one. This does not create a whole brand new array that's just like inches one. This is just another way that you can um, you have just created another name for inches one. So. So inches two, uh, or so, so all the elements of inches two are exactly the same as the elements of, of inches one, which means if you change an element in inches two, you're actually changing it in, in inches one also. So that's why they call it, a, it's a reference to another array. You aren't making it equal to another array, you're just making a reference to another array. And then you can reuse arrays too. Uh, and okay, so here's how you so so let's say you actually do want to make a copy Well, here's how you do it. There's a there's a method for that and There's a copy this copy method with the that has three parameters and uh, The first parameter is is what the is the source array the second parameter is the destination array and the length parameter is the number of elements that you want to copy uh, and it's, so it's um, like here, here we're, we're taking the, uh, so th this is just a thing where we've got this inches array and we want to create a centimeters array uh, and uh, that has the same values as the you know, corresponding values as the in inches array. So this, this first line here initializes an inches array 
the second line creates a new centimeters array, but doesn't put anything in it, but it does declare it as a, as a separate array. And this copy, array.copy, copies inches over into centimeters, and it does as many as there are inches, uh, uh, as there are in the inches array. There's as many elements as there are in the inches array. And then this for loop here actually takes each value in, in the centimeters array and multiplies it, you know, by one two point five four, which creates an which, which is how you convert inches to centimeters. And so anyway, so that's how you copy. Uh, there's another um, uh, form of the array dot copy. It's got five parameters, and it, in this case, you're you would be copying just a portion of an array to another array. And so here you're copying, uh, and so the last parameter is the number that you're going to copy. And this from array and from index is the starting uh, point in the in the in the source array, and then the two array and two index is where it's where you're copying it over to. And then of course it increments each time it copies. So here's an example of it's copying. So here we're copying, uh, we're taking the names array and we're copying it over in the last two names array starting at zero, the names array starting at one, and we're copying two elements. So this last two, so basically the second array here, last two names is skipping Martinez. So it just says Murak and Bohm in zero and one. Uh, code for a method that returns an array. Okay, so um, you can have methods return arrays. You know, you can have methods return scalar uh, values. You can also have methods return arrays. And so you have to you have to declare that as the type, the type of the, the method. So you so you know instead of just saying decimal to return a decimal number. You say decimal with these brackets, which means you're returning an array of decimals. And then um, you simply uh, uh, create inside, you create an array, decimal array, do a bunch of stuff to it, and then you just return the name of the array here. And this is how you run it, or this is how you use it. So it's gotta be, so this get rate array returns an array it stores it into the rates and you can also pass um, pass arrays as arguments so here's a here's a, a procedure where you're just passing in an array you're not you're not passing in a list of anything you're passing in an array so uh, that's pretty cool Finally, you may have something like you want to call this method with just three, you know, values, but, but inside the method you want those three value, those values to be treated as an array. So here's how you call it. You say, you know, you got this thing one, two, and three, and, but inside where you're calling it over here, two centimeters, because that's what you're calling, you use this params keyword here. And this, this says uh, there's going to be uh, some measurements coming in. There's going to be more than one coming in. And I want them to be put into a double array called measurements. So that's what the params does. There's null arrays. Uh, so here's a statement that creates a null array. Doesn't have anything in it. And uh, so, so let's see. You do have a null array, and you want to um, uh, you want to uh, take you know you want to convert the first element of the array to capital. You want to capitalize it. Well, there is no first element to the array. It's a null array. So this would cause an exception, a null reference exception. Uh, but you can use. Um, uh, these these so so what you can do is you can check first to see if if this 
this uh, array that you created, you can check first to see if it's null by doing this. Uh, you can check to see it and, you know, if it's not null, then you want to check to see if the first element is, is null. If it's not null, then you can do this assignment statement. Uh, the other, the other ways, the other way you can do it is you can use this uh, null conditional operator to prevent a null reference exception. And basically, when you're making this assignment, just like you're making this assignment here, you're not sure if initials is, um, you're not sure if initials is, can be null or not. So you're gonna put, you just put a little question mark there. And you're also not sure if the zeroth element of initials is null. I think that's all you gotta do. So that's what shows here. Question mark there and a question mark there. And uh, let's see, uh, that I was looking at this, this here. Yeah, question mark here and a question mark there. Um, and then uh, if, you know, if you're doing something like this and you're not, you're not sure because this might, this whole thing, a statement that uses a nullable type. So, so uh, you know, um, you, you still maybe wanna, um, if you're assigning, um, you can, uh, uh, when you're declaring a variable, like here you're declaring the, a variable called length, um, if you want to uh, allow n a null value without it create, creating a, an exception, then you just put a question mark there and then that, create, that makes it a nullable type. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about collections and collections are similar to arrays. Uh, both can store multiple elements which can be value types or reference types so in other words, you can actually have values in, in the collections, just like you, you, all, you mostly always do. But you can also, uh, they can also be um, references to other um, variables, you know, in your namespace, or it could be reference to an array. How they're different is an array is a feature of the C Sharp language. Collections are, cla are class the not net .NET framework, which means at the very top, you have to declare uh, that you're going to use that C Sharp or that .NET class. Collections provide methods to perform operations that arrays don't provide. And arrays are fixed in size and collections are variable in size. So that's convenient. So uh, here, are some commonly used collection classes. This T is is a t is type. So there's gonna a type's gonna go in there like string or int or something. So this is like a list of integers. Uh, there's also this way of doing it too, but that's old. Uh, you can have a sorted list, and this this uses a key a key to access, which is um, key value pair. And you can have queues, and there's a bunch of methods in there to help you uh, manage this queue. Like, you know, when you put something on a queue, it goes at the end of the line. When you take something off the queue, it comes off the beginning of the line. Whereas with a stack, when you put something in a stack, it goes, you push it in the front of the, the front of the stack, and when you take something off the stack, you, you pull it off the front of the stack. And those are useful in various um, contexts. Uh, there's also this uh, using, the using director for untyped, um, oh, so there's, uh, so you're gonna put the using directive up at the top. Uh, and um, there's these array lists. Array lists can be, um, can be untyped. 
an array list can be untyped. And um, so that means that each time you're going to put something in, you've got to say what the type is. Am I talking about the right thing? Okay, here's for typed collections, you use this one. And so here we're doing like, here's a, here's a, a this is going to be a list of integers. And this is how you can add, um, add numbers. You see back here, when you're adding, you got to, uh, you have to, like here, you're pulling something out. But well, here you've added, you've added, um, three integers. This would cause a runtime error because you're doing this. Yeah, okay. Uh, this will compile. Um, so here you're, you're pulling, you're pulling these numbers out and you're adding them up and this goes all the way to the top. So, so on the third, so, so when it tries to pull out this third number, this is not going to work. You can't convert this word to an integer. So that would cause a runtime error. But see, these are untyped, which means each time you, you pull something off or each time you, you reference one of these array elements, uh, you have to say what type, what type it is. Whereas if for the typed kind, like this one, you don't need to do that. You, you, say, you say what the type is, you say what the list, what the elements in the list type are, and they're all the same. Uh, so in this case, this thing would cause a, a compile time error because you've declared this list as an integer array and you put your integer collection and you're putting in integers here and then all of a sudden you try to put in a word and it's not going to take it. And uh, you can have strings, you can have decimals, you can have a capacity, I guess. Uh, common properties and methods in the list class. So uh, you can index um, an element in, in the list. It's kind of like an array. You just say which one you want to access. Um, there's a property which says um, how many elements the list can hold. And uh, there's another property which uh, says the number of elements there are in the list. And uh, there's a method. Uh, there's a, a method here for adding something into the list. There's a method here for clearing out the list, making it empty. Uh, there's a. This is a search thing where it's it's it returns a true value if it if the list contains this object. Here you're able to insert an object at at a particular index, which pushes pushes everything else down. Uh, here you're able to remove an object and it just uh, it shifts everything up. Uh, here you can remove an object at an index. This removes the first occurrence of an object. This removes an object at an index, where, uh, whatever the object is, and shifts everything. Uh, this down here sorts it and this here does a binary search on it. So um, here's how the increasing works. It's kind of dumb to even talk about it. But so, so you've created a new list here, and it can have three elements in it. So, so you start putting in names, and then all of a sudden you want to put in a fourth element, and it automatically takes care of expanding it. So by expanding it, it doubles the capacity. So each time you hit the threshold, or each time you hit the, the limit, it simply doubles the capacity of the list. And so here's, a, here's how you can retrieve a, a, a value from the list. You just you know, have a reference name, list name. So it's like here you've got a list, you're declaring a list, it's a decimal list. Name of it is sales totals. And this is how you declare it, it's a new decimal list. And here you're actually, uh, um, initializing the list with one, two, three, four values. This is the zeroth, this is the first, this is the second, this is the third, 
And so you can refer to the zeroth value this way, the zeroth sales totals is stored in the sales one here. And then uh, here we're gonna insert a new value in for numbers for zero, for the zeroth element. And so that what that's done is that's pushed, that's going to push this 3275 up one, I think. Oh, oh and so, no, this inserts a new one. So this inserts it right over. So I'm sorry, I'm wrong. It doesn't push anything. It doesn't adjust anything. It just, uh, it just overwrites. So this is gonna overwrite 3275.68. This overwrites 3275.68 with 2745.73, but it leaves the rest of them. Never mind. I was right the first time. Uh, here we see that it was pushed up to the second one, but then here we've removed it. So this is what removes it right here. So, um, so what happens is when we insert this first one, for a moment it has five, five elements in this list. It's got two, seven, four, five, and then it's got the rest of the three here. It's got, <coughs> it's got what was there. Uh, it's got this, this one, this one, this one, and this one is what it had. And then we push another one in there, insert it in there, and now we have, you know, five elements. And then what this one does is this, this one here, remove at, that actually removes this 3275 because that's, that's at index number one. And uh, so anyway, and then so, so when you just display it out like this, uh, you use a for each to traverse. That's, I guess you can use index also to, to traverse the list. And uh, so you can display it out like that. Uh, here we are. Um, this uses this contains method to see if this value X is in the list. If it is in the list, it removes it. Simple code to do that. Here's some code to uh, sort the list. And then once it's sorted, you can use binary search to uh, find um, to find an element. And uh, here's, um, so for the sorted list, um, the, we have the indexer, the key. And then um, a sorted list is different. A sorted list is different because here, uh, instead of having indexing, you have a key. And so um, there's keys and values. And so uh, when you add something to the list, you add both the key and the value. Here, and you clear, you see if it contains a key, if it contains a value, you can, you, you can remove a key, uh, or you can remove an element with a specified key, uh, you can remove an element at a specified index, you can remove an element, or, okay, and then uh, um, the, the key is the, can you remove an element that's, I guess you gotta, oh, contains value, you can do that. okay. Anyway, um, so so here's so here's how we do it. You, now this this makes sense now. So with a regular list, you would just be adding these numbers, and these numbers would have an order, and this would be the zeroth number, and the first number, and the second number, and the third number. In this case, you're adding the key, also. So although it does ha have an index, you also can refer to these element or these uh, array elements by their key value. So you can, you know, and this is how you put it in. So Finkel P has got this, Adams A has got that, uh, Potter E has got that, and Lewis J has got that. And so, so you can refer to these, uh, let's, 
let's see. Okay, here. So here, for example, we're, we're creating this value. You know, you kind of refer to it this way. So you can put it in these square brackets like that. So you have, uh, so you, you create a variable called employee key and you set that equal to Lewis J. And then you want to see what the sales list is of Lewis J of the employee key. And that's going to be stored in sales total. And so Lewis J was 5289.75. So this is going to put 59.280 whatever in sales total. Here you're, you are listing them out, and here's how you use the for each, the for each uh, loop declaration to get out key value pairs. You, you, you do it this way, you say key value pair, and this is the key and this is the value. Uh, for all of the, um, for, for all, and, and we're gonna call the key value pair employee sales entry. So we refer to it employee sales entry dot key and employee sales entry dot value. So for all of the key value pairs in this sales list here, uh, we're going to loop and we're going to create this string to display out. And this is what it would look like. It's Adams A is that, Finkel P is that, Lewis J is that, and Potter E is that. All right. Uh, there's queues and stacks. You know about these. A queue is uh, you put stuff at the front of the queue. No, you put stuff, you end queue on the end of the queue. You dequeue from the front of the queue. You can clear the queue. You can also peek to see who the first person is in line without taking them. Okay. And, and that's kind of important because, you know, you may have, multiple queues and they're all in order or something and you want to you want to um, let's say you have queues of sorted the queues are sorted but then you want to still take them in sorted order so you want to look at the, the you want to peek at all the queues to find the, the smallest one or the the, um, the one that's been waiting the longest or something like that so anyway that's what peak is used for it's it's, it's a useful function and so here, here we, de we de declare a queue. Uh, it's a string queue, and the name of the queue is name queue. And then we're gonna uh, end queue, that, that's like adding. We're gonna add Bohm, we're gonna add Martinez, or we're gonna add Murak. And then we're gonna loop, and each time we loop, we're gonna uh, do, do this DQ method. And we're gonna get, um, get this, get, uh, and, you know, we're gonna append them out to this name queue string. And we display it out and it looks like this, Bo Martinez Murat. Same order that was entered, same order that's dequeued. Makes me hungry for ice cream. All right, a stack is different. A stack, it just is, you, it, you pull stuff off of the same side that you, that you put stuff in, so you push push pop, you know, it's like, uh, you know what a stack is. Uh, so, so you can push, that's, that's like enqueuing. You can pop, that's like dequeuing. And then there's clear and peak. So here we're gonna push Bohm, push Martinez and push Mirat. And then when we pop them, they pop out in the reverse order. So they, so the first one that's gonna pop out is Mirat. The second one that's gonna pop out is Martinez. And the third one is that's going to pop out. The last one's going to pop out is the first one that was pushed in, and that was going to be bold. So that's why we see the names here in reverse order. Uh, so here's um, these are array lists, and we looked at them before. You have to you have to you have to say what the type is when you're referring to the element when you're referencing the element when you're Grabbing out the element, you got to say what the type is, because it's it's not the type is not connected to the when you declare the array list. It, they they can be any type. So here's how we insert and and remove. So so we can insert, just insert away. It's when we remove it is when we gotta say. 
See, whenever we remove it, whenever we try to get, get it out, we got to say what we're getting out. So here, this code displays the array list. Uh, let's see. So this, so we can check to see if something is in is in array list the same same way and uh, this thing searches and sorts same way and uh, exercise this is exercise one which we're not not going to do this is exercise two we're not going to do this is ex extra exercise one which we did last time and this is extra exercise two that we're going to do this time it, the, in this one, they're stored in a list instead of an array. In this one, they're stored in a array. All right, so I'm going to close this. And uh, let's see. I am recording, are am I not? Yes, I am. It says pause recording. Okay, so um, so let's go to our assignment. It's this one, and it's just like as you were supposed to do this exercise eight point two described here. So this that's this one, and so I'll put this up in the corner somehow. Okay, before I do, let me just grab this out, put it over here, go back here, and I'm going to um, go to resources. Oh, okay, let me go back here. All right, what does it say? In this exercise, you'll modify the score calculator from exercise 8.1. not working it's not making it bigger it's not making it doesn't make the PDF bigger all right whatever all right so um, in this section you modify the score calculator from 8-1 so the scores are stored in a, in a list instead of an array okay so it, it would like us to start with the score calculator uh, so it gives you a project to start with score calculator with list well okay so let's go to um, 148 exercises let's go to 8 chapter 8 let's go to find score calculator with list that would be like this one this zip file so I'm going to click on that save it on the desktop Okay, here it is, right click, extract all, and I should be able to just start it up because I've got my Visual Studio open already. And uh, let me just, uh, run this what does it do um, 100 90 110 oh it's got to be 80 80 and display scores yeah that looks nice okay so if we look at um this let's let's look at it let me make it a little bit smaller this down uh let me um well let me open up the form one 
and let me right click and do view code. So here's the code. I can make it a little bit bigger. And let me bring this down here. And I can bring this down a little bit. Okay, so um, there's the collections general. Good, that's there. And so this is um, got a totaling up. It's an array. We're using an array. And it's got some exception stuff in there. Okay, let's. Um, Let's see what this says. Replace the declaration for the array variable with a declaration for, for a list, okay? So, um, instead of this, instead of this, have it be, um, list, and this is going to be an int array. Uh, and I'm going to call it scores list. And this will equal a new list of int of type int. Um, and this is a method. I'm doing something wrong. New. There we go. OK, so this declares. This replaces the initial um, declaring an integer array with an integer list. And what's next? And delete the class variable for the score count. We, don't, we aren't gonna need to uh, keep track of the score uh, separately now because, because we can just see how many are in our list. So I'm just going to comment that out. And um, modify the click event handler for the add button so it adds the score that's entered by the user into the list. Okay, let's do that first. So where is this so-called event handler? Oh, look, this is all squiggly now. It's, it looks, I better do something with that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with uh, scores list dot add parentheses score. And we can comment this out. There we go. And then in addition, delete the statement that increments the score count variable you deleted. Ah, that's the that's why this has got a squiggly. It's dang squigglies. And what else does it say? In addition, then declare a local variable to store the count and assign the count property to the list of the list of this variable. Hmm, declare? I'm supposed to declare a local variable? What the hell? All right, so uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna call this local variable, I'm gonna call it int count. What a quaint, what a good idea. Okay, so that's gonna be uh, scores, list dot count just it's that simple so now this is no longer squiggly yeah, that's what i just did modify the click event handler for the clear scores button so it removes any scores that have been added to the list all right, there's a clear scores button. Oh, look, a clear scores, clear. Okay, so this should instead be, I see, this just recreates the, this just reinitializes the scores array to, to nothing. And what I wanna do instead is to do this. I'm gonna do, 
scores list dot dot clear just like that and I can get rid of this silliness Oh, modify the click event handler for the display scores button. So it sorts the scores in the list and then displays in the dialog box. Okay, so uh, display scores, where's display scores? Oh, display scores. Ah, display click. All right. What? How do I sort? I think instead of doing that, I would rather do scores list dot sort. And then I can get rid of this. So that sorts the list. And then I need to do um, For each I in scores list, that looks like that's about it. I don't think I need anything else. All right, um, is there any more squigglies? Are there any squigglies or squiggly free? All right, well, I'm going to just uh, run this thing, see what happens. Okay, uh, 70, 80, uh, 60, oops, sorry, 60, 35, 29, okay, there's a bunch of scores. What did I just do? Oh. 29. Okay, there's five scores. And so let's display them. Ooh, they're sorted. All right, I'm gonna assume that's correct. Clear, display, nothing. All right, well, that looks pretty good. Um, are there any questions? Can you do this by yourself now? Just, you know, wait till it's posted, play it back, follow along, and uh, don't worry, it's gonna get, it's, these are gonna get more difficult and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be telling you less. You know, we aren't even halfway done with the course yet. So later on, in about two or three or four more assignments, I'm gonna be giving you less information, I'll be doing it, I'll get you started, and then I'll talk about what you have to do to finish. And then, um, you know, then you can f finish that way. But right now, I just want you to get used to doing this, and you just go along, you enter stuff in, you can, when you type stuff in, you know, probably some, there's gonna be times when you don't type it exactly the same as the way I typed it, and you're gonna get squiggly lines, and, and you know, you, you're gonna get some sort of thing, and when you're gonna build it, and it's gonna come up and it's gonna go bing, and you're gonna look at it and you're gonna to try to figure out what the heck's going on, and you go, oh, line 73, there's something on line 73. Well, let's go to line 73. Oh, look, there's a squiggly. Oh, that I meant to say clear, okay? And then it just magically goes away, and now you're able to run it. So, um, you know that's how you get practice getting used to the getting used to the debugger and everything and uh, you know and later on we'll work we'll work more on being able to innovate yourself so are there any questions all right well this is a little bit shorter class today but I think we're done with what we we're going to cover <coughs> Excuse me. So, thanks for watching. See you next week.